So with the eye to the clock, we will go to a question though from Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and I'm very pleased to hear the Minister's comments, uh, certainly about cooperation and also about uh, uh, good planning and governance. Uh, that's the subject matter of my question. Uh, in the riding of Vancouver Point Grey is a uh, neighbourhood, uh, a number of neighbourhoods at the University of British Columbia for which the Minister is responsible, uh, known as Electoral Area A, governed by the University Neighbourhoods Association in small part, and a, a, an advisory council at, on the University Endowment Lands in small part. Um, given that the province acts as a municipal government, and many functions around UBC. Um, can the minister advise uh, whether there are any specific plans for consultation of the people who live in that riding uh, over the coming year, as well as any budgetary amounts that have been set aside for those consultations, and in particular, consultations around how the province can better serve the residents there? consultations on proposed infrastructure like roads and roundabouts, and consultation on zoning and land use planning. And then just to put it all uh, in, in uh, one series of questions, just with an eye on the clock, um, are there uh, plans to consult on uh, governance as well, uh, whether there uh, uh, is desire among the residents there for increased powers for the University Neighbourhoods Association or other uh, governance bodies there and increased representation? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for your question. Uh, I remain interested in hearing about how discussions um, evolving on the peninsula, and we are always open uh, to, uh, uh, to consultation of stakeholders on this one. Um, the challenge on this particular issue with the UEL, the residents in UBC, is that there has not been consensus around the change in governance. So if there was that element of consensus that could be brought forward, we'd be more than willing um, to look at what governance um, that the stakeholders agree to uh, in consensus. And now, do, do, do I? So, Honourable Chair, I move that the committee rise and report progress and ask leave to sit again. Thank you. So you've all heard the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. So we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Call to order Committee of Supply in Committee Room C. Minister. 
Board Motion Vote Number 17 be it resolved that a sum not exceeding $171,265,000 be granted to Her Majesty to defray the expenses of the Ministry of Community, Sport and Cultural Development Ministry operations. Thank you. Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Uh, Mr. Chair, yesterday uh, we were discussing the uh, area known as Electoral Area A, the area around the University of British Columbia, uh, and in particular the area governed by the province and, uh, and administered by, in part, the University Neighbourhood Association and the University Endowment Lands Adv Advisory Committee. And uh, my question uh, um, through you to the Minister, uh, related, con uh, related to consultation in particular, and when I say consultation, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm talking about going out to the community to ask about their feedback on particular initiatives, whether they be transportation, governance, uh, or any other matter. And so uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the Minister, uh, can the Minister advise on whether the province um, uh, plans any consultation uh, with uh, the communities at UBC about how the province can better serve their needs uh, through, uh, through um, at all. Um, let's, let's just start with that, on uh, how the province uh, can better govern uh, the areas around UBC.
Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. By way of background, in the fall of 2010, the Deputy Minister and staff visited and met with the University, um, the uh, UBC Board of Governors, the Executive Alumni, the Community Advisory, and the University Neighborhood Association. And the conclusion at that time was that there was a strong preference for status quo. Um, since then, we continuously meet with the UELs, the Community Advisory Group, on issues such as land use planning, and currently there is a consultation process that is going forward around land use planning. Uh, Member. Mr. Chair, uh, can the minister uh, clarify which uh, process is ongoing right now around land use planning? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. There's currently two rezoning uh, processes in the works uh, that the Design Review Panel and the Community Advisory Committee are actively involved in the review of one of the applications that has been submitted, and we are currently waiting for the other application. Member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you uh, to the Minister. Uh, the Minister also listed, uh, and I apologize, uh, paraphrasing if I, if I misspeak, uh, some kind of ongoing uh, consultations that will be happening. Um, can the minister clarify whether these are consultations with residents by post, uh, online, uh, through community meetings, or whether the minister is simply referring to talking to the uh, University Endowment Lands or the Advisory Committee?
Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. There is a regular process of consultation and outreach. Uh, we have a fantastic manager, uh, very very knowledgeable of uh, with the UEL, that meets with the Community Advisory Committee, and there is a newsletter that's produced, there is a website, there's face-to-face -face meeting, as well as there's accountability sessions currently with the Greater Committee. Member? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, that addresses uh, uh, certainly the University Endowment Lands. What about the University Neighbourhoods Association, the neighbourhoods of the University? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the Minister. Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and to the member opposite, uh, thank you very much for your question. Currently, um, when we talk about Electoral A and the UBC Neighbourhood Association is actually outside the jurisdiction of this committee, uh, it is a separate society based under the Societies Act. Member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just to uh, clarify uh, then, the Minister uh, has no intention of consulting uh, with this society at all? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And just going back to what I previously previously said or stated, in the fall of 2010, we did do the consultations with that group, and they, in fact, wanted it to remain status quo. Member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my final question then uh, is that uh, the minister uh, is going to stand uh, here and advise the thousands of people who live in the U University Neighbourhoods Association area that she is relying on a three-year-old consultation as being sufficient uh, for the next year. Uh, I, I just would like to clarify that on the record, please, Minister. Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We are always open to consultation and we're just waiting for the group to ask us. We have not yet heard from them. Member. <laughs> <laughs> You've, uh, uh, the, uh, Mr. Chair, the Minister has made a liar of me. I do have one last question. Uh, if, if the group wishes to ask who in the Minister's office should they approach uh, to ask for the Minister to come and consult with them about uh, issues in that community?
Minister. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, please feel free to contact our office and our Deputy Minister will direct to the right, correct individual.